So the title of my uh, presentation is the, the lightweight data set for IoT uh, uh, decoy development. And the motivation uh, for doing this was uh, uh, not necessarily to, to, uh, to add another data set that's already out there. Uh, there are numerous data sets available. Most of them are for uh, computer networks in general. But uh, but there are also uh, a handful for IoT devices that are useful. Uh, the The purpose was uh, for us to adopt an IoT data set that was convenient for us to uh, overlay security uh, um, strategies, including uh, our area, which is called deception or replication strategies to uh, to uh, add security and confuse uh, the attackers. Uh, the way we're planning to use this data set is to inject, inject replicas of IoT devices and, uh, and also to inject uh, uh, replicas of known traffic patterns uh, uh, modified uh, for addresses and other attributes for, uh, for, for diversity of the devices. Uh, and uh, Another motivation was that a lot of the data sets out there are uh, intensive, uh, resource intensive, statistically intensive, uh, and require a lot of uh, uh, computer resource uh, utilization, especially when you're starting to get into some of the software uh, statistical programming, such as R Studio and other things that uh, take time to assess uh, the data sets involved. Uh, our work is, uh, is being is ongoing and it's available open source on Kaggle and I provided the website uh, below. So uh, before I get into the actual details of the the uh, data set itself, I wanted to you know reiterate the importance of understanding uh, uh, an attack scenario early on in the in the uh, in the attack mindset of an uh, intruder, what we're trying to do is prevent attacks, identify attacks early in the cycle. Uh, if you look closely at some of the uh, the models out there, including the Lockheed Martin, that's uh, famous uh, called the kill chain model that was used in the military and elsewhere, uh, the the first uh, um, plan of attack uh, by uh, an, an intruder is typically to do some re research, reconnaissance, and then to figure out ways to weaponize its uh, attack uh, before it can deliver that attack or other types of exploitations to the uh, resource uh, uh, involved uh, for its, uh, its uh, objective. So um, in that sense, uh, we try to identify the attacks early and then uh, gaining insight into the attacks of what, what the attacks motives are and potential next steps uh, that the attacker may take. With that, we, uh, our research is focused in on uh, deception technology and deception technology has been widely used in com computer networks. Um, mostly, uh, uh, you know, using the honeypots and canary files, uh, which are ways to identify uh, uh, attackers coming into the network. And then, uh, oh, so, oh, someone please be, okay. Uh, and then the other thing is to uh, notice that it's less common right now in IoT, uh, perhaps because there are just uh, too many IoT devices already deployed and how would you add extra IOT in a uh, in a subset of that network uh, our, our our solution is to uh, focus in on the consumer market where IOT is commonly present uh, it's not necessarily uh, applicable here in our research to look at the industrial application but it that definitely extends there and uh, the way we're using deception is to obfuscate uh, confuse the attacker into not knowing where the true uh, elements are in the network, and then also to gain uh, attributes of what the attacker's goals are. And the way we do that is through what's called replication de deception that could be 
turned on or off uh, based on the assessment that an attack is ongoing. So with that background, I wanted to get into uh, the data set that we had in mind. And again, it's uh, focused more on a lighter weight data set mo focused on uh, devices that are out there in the consumer market. Um, they are real devices in our data sets. Uh, we use things that you could buy off of uh, Amazon and uh, in the store that would be typical of uh, a consumer user looking to deploy IoT, even if he doesn't know what the uh, full full capacity about what IoT can do, they, they're still available in the marketplace. And um, what we did here is um, we selected only a certain number of devices so that we could first uh, develop a baseline and then make this uh, model expandable as we become more familiar with the with the traffic patterns and the knowledge of uh, how how IoT is interacting. So we started small and then we started to grow. Uh, the selection of the devices that we used uh, are all in what's called the VLAN 100. Uh, the, the purpose there was to separate IoT out from the rest of the network so we could have full, fully captured uh, IoT-only traffic, uh, as well as, uh, if we wanted to, the ability to introduce uh, blended traffic from both IoT and other types of devices in the network. So you will see that our, our work is mostly focused on the VLAN 100 using Again, common common real world uh, networking equipment that's uh, available for consumers, including the Ubiquity uh, Unify uh, products like the uh, wireless access point that's connecting all the IoT devices, uh, a, a switch that we put in place uh, a, that has what's called a span port so that we could do some monitoring of that traffic. Uh, again, you don't want to try, uh, try to do Wireshark or or, uh, or traffic monitoring directly off the wireless link simply because it gets a little bit more involved with uh, needing to understand the security and, and characteristics of the wireless frequencies and the hopping and spread spectrum. So we decided uh, it's best to do a span port off of, off of a, um, uh, a switch that uh, has the ability to do a promiscuous mirror port, port mirroring. Um, and you need to have that special uh, capability in there to get the Wireshark traffic just on IoT. Uh, so we have the light bulbs, uh, the power plugs. We're using uh, Amazon, two of each, uh, the Echoes, two, two each plugs, two of each uh, light bulbs, and one, one camera. Uh, if I had to consider what is the lower uh, end, it's the light bulbs and the and the uh, plugs that have limited functionality. But when you get into cameras and uh, and the Amazon devices, there's much more functionality. And associated with that, there's also a lot more traffic generated on those uh, products. So uh, so that's the right hand side of the the network. On the left hand side of the network is where we uh, we put what's called the PCAP recorder. That is the Wireshark monitoring uh, device that's attached to the span port off the switch. And then we have attack machines. Those are virtual machines using Kali Linux. Uh, and there could be multiple virtual machines to introduce uh, uh, distribution for several of the attacks, uh, multiple uh, uh, attack scenarios at once. Uh, all that could also be uh, uh, passed along to uh, to brokers for IoT. IoT brokers use a message brokering system, uh, usually associated with like an Am Amazon Web Service uh, that's able to do subscribe models for the types of IoT groups that you're involved in. And that's all the way to the left uh, off of what we're using as a, a standard Verizon uh, Fios networking out to the cloud. So that's the general framework of how we set up the uh, IoT uh, implementation to acquire our flex data. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, 
we wanted to make sure that the data set uh, had a variety of different uh, uh, scenarios. Um, and you could also see that in several of the other data sets out available. Uh, what our data set brings is uh, is some things of uh, of uh, differences in, in the types of, sort of the number of devices being used and this uh, time frames that we're using our devices in. Uh, we set up uh, the scenarios into three categories, one being setup. Uh, that's just uh, the generic, uh, you know, first on and, and then shut off uh, to see what type of characteristics the devices uh, have on those uh, on those uh, those uh, procedures for setup and teardown. We only decided at this point to do the the cloud, uh, the uh, electric plug, and the light bulb. So, if you noticed in the previous diagram, there were two devices of each. One is really a um, a uh, just a a uh, a backup that we're not doing anything with, and then the other device is where the uh, the traffic. Uh, uh, scenario is being implemented. So with the power on, we did on one light bulb and uh, one electric plug denoted as 31 and 41. Uh, and the uh, other uh, uh, ones uh, that were not being uh, touched were the 32 and plug two and 42 light bulb two. So in addition to setup uh, uh, data captures, we then went on to uh, the set of just benign captures uh, and uh, the difference between the benign and the attack is benign we were not implementing any type of uh, simulated attack on the devices we're just wanting to see how the devices uh, perform both within an idle state meaning it's already been powered on but there is no there is no uh, interaction by the user and so we monitor those for one, five, and 10 hours on all IoT devices. Uh, when I say all IoT devices, it's the entire network. Uh, and that's why it's a, a slash 24 at the end. It's, a, it's a looking at anything on that network. And again, the network is confined to just those devices. So we, we know what we're looking at. Then in addition to the idle state, where there's no human interaction, we then decided to take a, a, a controlled uh, approach to understanding activity uh, with what's called an active state, in which case we adapted our own conditions uh, to, to apply to the data so that we know exactly what we did. And then we could go back and look at uh, the ramifications in the actual captures from those devices. Uh, you know, when, when we were looking at other data sets prior to developing our own, we, we had a difficult time trying to figure out, you know, when was uh, any type of user involved versus when it was idle. So this was a, a way for us to get a better understanding of that. Then uh, we use that for just four IoT devices and one being the IoT camera, uh, and then one being on the Amazon Echo. And then we did it also for the smart plug and the slight bulbs, one, five, and 10 hours again. And, and that way we have a, a baseline to, to look at a benign as well as active uh, in comparison. And then finally, in order to put this all together in, in, in relationship to our thesis work, we started to then implement attack scenarios using what, what I refer to as the left side of that network with the virtual machines and the, the attack machines uh, on, on um, you know, using um, Kali Linux in, in, in particular to demonstrate different types of attacks on the devices. Uh, and in this case right now, what I, I'm show, showcasing is a, a denial of service attack on a plug, uh, a brute force attack on a, uh, on the camera that's being used, and then uh, just some general reconnaissance on all IoT devices uh, as part of the earlier portions of the attack uh, uh, sequence.
For the data sets, uh, these are the software uh, tools that we used. Uh, Wireshark uh, is is uh, well known for capturing all the packets on on the network, and there were some uh, initial difficulties, to, and that's why we decided to use that port mirroring promiscuous mode with a separate wire uh, uh, sw wired switch attached to the wireless access point, as, as opposed to capturing traffic directly off the wireless network. We use, and by the way, these are all open source. Uh, uh, software packages. Uh, uh, Trace Wrangler, um, this is going to come in handy for two reasons. One is uh, we're using uh, defined networks that are available, and we wanted to first anonymize uh, the addresses. And with Trace Wrangler, it's a package that you can anonymize captured Wireshark pack PCAPs, and then uh, uh, either uh, set up certain filters so that you could adapt uh, changes to them, such as in our case, we wanted to to uh, mask only a portions of the MAC addresses. So if we wanted to keep the serial numbers different, but keep the uh, vendor codes the same, we were able to do that with Trace Wrangler, as well as uh, be able to uh, define IP uh, address uh, changes if needed. And then, um, we're using uh, something for uh, for flows. Wireshark captures things at the packet level, but we were trying to bring things up to the flow level, and and the flow level that we're using is uh, is called uh, Z ZUI. Uh, these were things uh, in the past that it was just recently renamed. Uh, it used to be called. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact name, but the, if if you go on to the uh, onto their website, you will see that it's uh, it, it's a, a co competitive solution to other types of things out there. But it's open source, and what it's able to do is uh, is evolve the packets and capture them to to the connection layer, so that you could get a better feel for what's going on at a flow based situation as opposed to a packet based uh, uh, situation. And in addition to that, it ties nicely into being able to uh, integrate uh, security alerts. So that way we could grasp a, an alert coming in using Sericata or some other open source uh, engines and, and then having those embedded in the ZZUI so that an alert uh, can be triggered and then passed on to our uh, recording elements to understand the statistical ramifications. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we use Kali Linux on the attack engine, uh, particularly uh, HP3, uh, ping three is the denial of service and flooding uh, commands that we used. And then Nmap for port scanning and then brute force credentials. There's other programs out there called Hydra and other things. And this is just the starting elements of what we're trying to capture. From the output standpoint, this, the analysis standpoint, uh, we're res resorting back to our studio for, for the graphical and uh, visual presentations, uh, along with some just tabular calculations off Excel. And that's where we started to also experience some issues with other data sets and trying to uh, uh, capture large quantities of data uh, reasonably with the power resources on our machines. So I wanted to show you some representative results. Uh, this is just uh, um, some things that we're able to pull out of here with, with our uh, IoT data set. One is uh, you'll see that this is uh, the uh, attack. This is the denial, denial of service attack by just one machine. It, it's not a distributed denial of service. It's just a one machine attack. And and it was, tr it was uh, targeted at uh, at the AC plug one, and and the way I know that is uh, my my IP address is dot thirty one. You could see from that uh, that the device is totally inoperable and is not able to send any packets just by implementing that. So this just uh, is an easy way for us to to kind of grasp the, the data sets. And as we move forward, we're going to have other types of uh, data sets. In addition to just uh, the packet load side, we're also going to be capturing uh, the amount of seconds uh, per packet being sent and received, 
and other statistical uh, uh, um, parameters that are valuable in understanding how an attack is being uh, is affecting the IoT devices and the network. Uh, so I, I want to come back to uh, what was also talked a little bit about in the last presentation with Samia. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, a lot of what she represented here is, is included in some of our, uh, our, uh, our earlier reviews. Uh, in her, uh, her presentation, she adapted mostly to the, the CIC data sets, uh, the, the Canadian uh, um, uh, Canada Industry for Cybersecurity uh, uh, Institute for Cybersecurity data sets of 2017 and 2018. They also have an IoT data sets for 2022. Uh, and then uh, we have some earlier uh, versions of data sets that we looked at the DARPA data set, but didn't have any type of um, uh, information on IoT at that point. And then for specifically the IoT aspects of data sets, uh, the two, two data sets that are uh, concurrent and, and relatively recent in 2018 and 2019 from the University of New South Wales uh, were, were some of the baselines that we looked at. Uh, very, very detailed uh, um, data sets with lot, lots of parameters, lots of uh, uh, labels and uh, lots of entries. Uh, then there was also uh, the, the the work being done at the Czech Technical University with Garcia and others uh, with the IoT 23, again, having the different scenarios. Uh, what our challenges were was trying to understand what was going on with those uh, data sets. And uh, in order for us to, to do that, we thought it would be easier if we just did it ourselves so that we understand what, what type of data we're, we're administering and where, where some of the activities are occurring. And we had a hard time doing that with data sets that were already evolved. Uh, the last one that I think was uh, uh, pretty interesting, but is not much, uh, there, there's not much uh, documentation or other things out there is the AIoT SOL data set. And what they did is try to apply attacks based on the OWASP model uh, for different scenarios to that device. Uh, the, the problem is trying to understand things and to get documentation on it was limited in our view. And uh, some of the other things that I also want to uh, just mention here is based on, on the observations that we've seen so far, um, we, we observed a couple of things that kind of are uh, intriguing. And one is, uh, especially, is that even when the devices were not being used, they were in total idle mode, uh, no activity, no requests, there was still considerable traffic uh, being sent out to the internet to different sites, uh, perhaps even to the vendors. This is in addition to traffic that was going out to the broker, uh, uh, you know, the MQTT uh, broker out at Amazon Web Services. We were able to identify that perhaps there were some uh, indications of uh, messaging of usage going out to uh, to vendor, vendor sites, although well, further investigation is still warranted. Uh, secondly, um, we also saw a lot of uh, activity between the devices themselves. So if we had an IoT plug one, we saw some interaction between plug one and plug two. Uh, so that was kind of interesting as well, even on, on idle state. Uh, second observation uh, from these real devices that you pick up in the, the stores, uh, We've seen limited use of the IP version six addressing in this. Uh, if you start to configure the real devices uh, that are being purchased, uh, they come up back with IP version four numbering, uh, and that's pretty much what we're able to use. So uh, you know, just uh, there's a lot of protocols, and and the whole idea of IoT is to to evolve to an IP version six, uh, the 128 bit. Uh, 
addressing scheme with some of the advantages of IP version six, but yet some of these are devices, especially low cost devices are still implementing the IP version four. And um, on the wireless side, when you pick up these IOT capable devices or uh, wireless capable, we're only seeing options for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Uh, you know, we were expecting to see a lot of the IoT advanced protocols that are being out there on ZigBee and other types of uh, networks. But yet when you pick up these devices, we're only able to implement either Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth uh, types of technologies. And lastly, on, especially on the low end devices, we don't even have an option to change the bands. The bands are, strictly in the 2.4 early Wi-Fi band uh, range. So these were just some generic uh, observations that we picked up. Again, we picked up this information because we developed our own data set. Uh, I don't think we would have been able to capture everything uh, if we were using other people's data sets as well. And lastly, uh, I just want to point out some of what we're thinking of as some of our data uh, differentiators. Uh, you know, there are, and this is not to negate the importance of all the other data sets out there. They're 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 fantastic, uh, but our purposes were a little bit uh, more restricted and time consume uh, time constrained. Uh, you know, I I don't spend a lot of time just uh, running data all the time or trying to understand it. I'm trying to. Uh, get to an endpoint on my uh, deception uh, strategy. So we used real devices. Uh, a lot of the other types of uh, data sets out there are simulated devices, and we focused on consumer applications. Uh, some of the, or a lot of the other types of uh, data sets are uh, industrial or business or operated types of networks or or uh, devices, uh, some hard have consumer applications, but we we wanted to focus on ones that are picked up by the uh, uh, the commonplace consumer. Uh, the second thing is we wanted to use shorter time intervals than days or uh, you know twenty four hour periods, uh, capture less data, but have more scenarios, and uh, we were able to do that in a time convenient way and also have a way to ba balance the events out between benign and uh, attack and, and uh, have a nice uh, set of, uh, of balanced information so we could go ahead with our research. Um, and then again, we wanted to use limited uh, number of devices so that we understand the addresses of the to and froms very easily, as well as being able to then command our control of how we're gonna implement a security measure on top of that. So that's uh, pretty much the differentiators that we felt were important for uh, what we call uh, a lighter weight uh, flex data approach. And to sum up everything, um, again, uh, while this uh, presents information on how we approached our data set, the ultimate goal is really to uh, to get to a deception strategy for IoT security. Uh, it's also the important thing here is to, uh, to encourage development of, of uh, better security for IoT devices. And the more, more uh, apparent uh, discussions in the area of understanding the traffic and understanding what's happening is always a, a, a better way to improve things with security. And then uh, lastly, we wanted to uh, be able to use this uh, data set so that we could uh, inject and, uh, and, and mask certain types of uh, traffic parameters so that we could create replicas as part of our deception. So in general, uh, I think what's happening here is that uh, uh, we're, we're at a, a standpoint where we're trying to uh, put all this type of work together and then come up with ways to show the industry how uh, all these uh, tools are able to enhance uh, security. And the purpose of our mission is really to find out ways of how we could demonstrate the improved securities throughout the industry uh, with uh, comparisons between uh, non-protected and protected solutions. 
in addition to, to the fact and to do it uh, a priori before an attack does take place. And with that, I think uh, I completed my presentation so I could ask for questions at this point.